What's up guys, Justin from Jordan Performance and Racing. Uh, I'm going through the edit for this uh, Carbon Traps video and before I realized it, we're over 30 minutes uh, worth of uh, footage for a dang air filter and some carbon traps. So that's probably a little overkill. Uh, but if you're like me and you like the uh, technical stuff and you like the, the deep dive part of uh, hot rodding in general, uh, I'm gonna upload a second video uh, on the same topic, uh, but it covers all the data back to back and uh, shows the, the stock run and the modified runs and uh, actually goes through the data. So if you like me and you like that technical stuff, uh, there'll be a link in the description below uh, for that video. You can check it out uh, and kind of let me know what you think uh, as far as the back-to-back -back compare. Uh, but otherwise, here is the video on the carbon traps. What's up guys? Justin from Jordan Performance and Racing here in Ruskin, Florida. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is Thursday and today we get to see uh, if our stage one upgrades are actually worth, uh, worth the money. Um, so. The go-to for these dark horses seems to be uh, K&N filters or some other uh, aftermarket air filter and pull the carbon traps. Uh, so today we're gonna do back-to-back -back dyno testing and see what they're actually worth and see if it's actually worth uh, worthwhile doing the mod. So uh, car strap down, uh, for those of you who saw yesterday's video, uh, we made 442 uh, wheel horsepower uh, on our dyno. Um, if you can't tell, I'm sweating because it's currently 90 something degrees here in uh, Florida. Uh, it's extremely hot, so despite the heat, the car is performing a lot better than I expected it to. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, but today we're going to do uh, do some couple pulls, uh, just like yesterday. I expected to make pretty much the same power, um, and then we're going to pop the uh, air boxes off and wait for these trucks to pass. We're going to pop uh, pop the air boxes off, uh, pop the traps out, put in some new filters, then do a couple more back to backs. Um, I'm also data logging with FDRS. Um, uh, I'm told HP Tuners is almost done, uh, at least mapping the data logging for the 24 Mustangs. Um, so hopefully in future videos where we discuss performance and uh, calibration and, and more nitty gritty details, we're actually gonna have a, a data log to show you and actually kind of walk you through what everything means. But in the meantime, we get to use FDRS, which does allow us to see uh, some of the parameters and some of the options and uh, PIDs available, uh, but doesn't give us nearly the uh, the full scope of what we actually would normally want to see but for now it'll it'll work so we're going to do a couple pulls and pop the filters off and see how we do all right guys stock pulls are done um and if you can't tell based on the sweat pouring down my face it's hot here in Florida. Um, it is currently uh, 90 something degrees. Um, but uh, we got the back to back pulls done for the stock setup. Uh, yesterday was 442. Uh, today it was 433 and a half and then 439. So um, about where we expect it to be. Uh, still fifth gear, still everything the same. Uh, I'm gonna flip around and show you our data log. Um, again, this is about as good as we can get uh, until we get some aftermarket support, but just kind of show you what we're working with and uh, see what it looks like. All right, so this is FDRS. Uh, this is, uh, I did some research. I think it's Ford Diagnostic and Repair Service, maybe. I'm not sure, but either way, this is the um, Ford uh, Diagnostic System. Uh, IDS is, is more commonly known. Uh, for newer newer cars, uh, they use FDRS. Um, so the best I can do is, you know, pull some PIDs um, and see, you know, kind of see what the car is doing. Um, I can't look at map points or you know anything more advanced. Um, those would be called DMRs. But you know, the more basic stuff uh, as a uh, a Ford technician, what you would need to look at, that's what I have access to. So. Um, we can see here's the uh, throttle position, RPM, uh, and then here is uh, timing. I also have in here um, intake and exhaust cam angles. They're going to be down here. Um, without seeing inside the PCM, I don't know if the VCT solenoids are different or if they are uh, scaled differently in the PCM. So this is what we got. We got um exhaust and intake down here 
So my assumption is it's, it's very similar to a Gen 3, but we'll see. But yeah, the, the pool did uh, 2,000 to 70, 300, 300 ish. Maybe. Off the scale. Well, here you go. <laughs> Here's our limitations with our. Um, with our uh, FDRS. Let me see if I can change this. Oh, uh, I'm not exactly an expert in FDRS configuration. Uh, let me see. Range. Uh, oh, yes. There we go. Set the high. Uh, 7,500. Okay, there we go. Now we're talking. Yeah, so 73,65 before it cut me off. 70, yeah. Just under 7,400. So. You can see it's got decent spark, you know, especially for a stock vehicle. Uh, Mid-range, you know, around peak torques, 24 and a half, 23 degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, up to 25. Uh, usually see 26, but we uh, might have a little bit of knock activity. Uh, it, is, it is a lot hotter here, so that might be why. 25 degrees, 25 and a half, 26. Yeah, got decent timing. Pretty good. Um, this is what I was referring to yesterday. Uh, yesterday, this is your wideband fueling. This is bank one, bank two fueling. Uh, that was basically flatlined at 1.0, which is uh, not going to be power and rich, and that's not going to be what you want to be uh, seeing fueling-wise at wide open throttle. So that issue is fixed, and the car is making power. So now we're going to uh, pop the new filters in, pop the uh, traps out, and do uh, true back-to-back -back and see how it does. All right, so we got everything off, um, and turns out I'm missing like two horsepower because this was installed with a little flat back there, so... That may be a small restriction, but probably not. Who knows? But yeah, got the traps out, got the uh, air boxes all smooth. Took a little Dremel to clean up the little burrs from the retaining clips. We'll put them back on and see what it makes power-wise. All right, guys, all done. Back, uh, back in the car, ready to make a rip. So we've got the uh, filters on, traps out. Uh, cleaned up the intakes a little bit with the leftover uh, plastic. Uh, data logger is going. Car is definitely up to temperature. So let's see what it makes. So I'm not sure if that's going to show up on camera, but uh, 439 and 433. So here we go. quite as dramatic as we thought it was going to be. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. For true back-to-back. -back. All right, so we just did our first back-to-back, -back, uh, and I'm a little surprised at the results. Uh, everybody swears up and down that the, uh, the filters and traps are worth a, a buttload of power, but uh, at least on my back-to-back -back testing, it wasn't really worth much at all. However, uh, I did leave out the map straightener. Um, maybe that's why. Maybe maybe it needs uh, the map straightener, uh, the air straightener in place uh, to help uh, smooth the signal. Maybe that makes the fueling better. I'm not really sure. Uh, so our results weren't super great uh, compared to back-to-back -back pulls. Um, so I'm gonna put these back in and we'll see if it makes a difference. All right, we're back in the car. Uh, map straighteners are back on car is still nice and warm. I am still bald and nice and warm. 
So, let's make sure our data log is going. It is. All right, let's do take two. Doing this one hand is not as easy as it seems. All right. talk about it. see so yellow slash orange sorry did I get my keyboard <clears throat> you know if I had a, a social media team or like a, a camera crew this would be a lot easier but we're doing the best we can all right one-handed here we go it's like a magic trick all right so let's uh, let's look at Before and after. Well, you know, all right. Well, maybe the bold lines kind of threw me off. So, again, this is the forward facing camera. I'm not a pro YouTuber. I'm not a pro anything. Well, I'm a pro mechanic, but I'm not a pro social media guy. So, bear with me. We're doing, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. All right. So, now let's talk about one thing. These are back to back to back pulls as fast as I can do them, right? Uh, 185 190 coolant temps um dark horse has every dang sensor on the whole on the planet so every every fluid in the car i can look at the temperature so um, everything is pretty much pretty pretty consistent pretty uh, pretty much the same um the main difference from yesterday's dyno until today right here it's hot boys it's hot 97 degrees uh yesterday i think it was like 89 we had a <laughs> we had a cold front <laughs> A cold front in uh, the end of September, but it was a little chillier yesterday, but let's talk about it. So, yellow is before, blue is after. So, it looks like, you know, I'm, I gotta go look at the data and make sure the timing was all there, all that was ma basically consistent. Um, but, it looks like, you know, there's a little bit of power there, a little bit. So we've got 363, 368, looks like the, the best, best split. So before made 363, now it picked up five wheel of the tires, or excuse me, five foot pounds uh, of torque, uh, horsepower. You know, it's five to six ish, somewhere in there. Um, up top, it's a little more impressive, not by much. Um, what's not, what's nice I'm noticing about these uh, Gen 4 uh, S650s is they're really consistent. Back to back to back to back. Um, a lot of times, you know, the Gen, Gen 1, especially Gen 2 and Gen 3s, a little bit, um, they'll be a little inconsistent between pulls, you know, with the knock sensors doing things and just, just inconsistencies, inconsistencies between the pulls. 
um, you rarely get you know data like this where you can see that the power the curve is the same even this little dip right the the profile of the engine you know how it's delivering the power is more or less the same I mean there it comes up kind of dips down and kind of starts to come, come up again you know the shapes are the shapes the same which yeah of course you would expect it to be but when you're talking you know different a little bit different temperatures and overall just differences you know between pulls you'll see some inconsistencies but this gen 4 man it delivers all the time at least at least on the 12 or so pulls i've done they're all pretty much consistent but uh this is about the carbon traps and the air filters um so it looks like about five to seven wheel up top um and about four to five in the mid-range so it's not nothing it's also not double digits that i've seen um, some other stuff reporting so let's talk about why that could be um who knows uh differences between dyno pools uh you know they could be different temperature it could have cooled down on the shop it could have been hot you know google confirmation bias um and that could explain a lot of it um you know i'm not i'm not pointing fingers at anybody i'm not saying anything about anybody um if you want something to if you want to believe something can happen you know you're as a human being your tendency is to uh be a little biased and the outcome is is is, is very possible to become uh apparent and so are the are the filters and carbon traps worth 20 horsepower uh not on my dyno not here in florida at least where i am currently um it is a well can't really tell but it's a nice sunshiny day here in florida so they're worth something yes you know are they worth you know a lot of power i mean that's up to your your definition but um it's a one-way street <laughs> so they ain't going back in uh as best i could tell it's not a serviceable part a serviceable part um they do have these little um there's two of them these go on the on either side either side of the trap and that's where that's what retains it in the actual elbow uh the the, the actual intake elbow um so they ain't going back on because there's nothing holding in place uh, unless i call up uh, the dealership and try to get a, a replacement intake but we're not doing that so i don't know that's all we got uh what do you guys think you think it's worthwhile do you think the tests are bogus uh do you think it's um a good thing a bad thing uh comment down below uh let me know what you think um if you just got to the channel it's going to be very obvious that i am not a youtuber i am not uh this is not my thing uh we're trying it out um i am super excited about this car um i've had a lot of mustangs over the years uh i'm always excited about them um, i'm really excited about this one um i think there's a lot of potential a lot of uh there's gonna be a lot of believers you know once a pcm is cracked so uh, i'm excited to bring content out there uh kind of showcase you know what we've learned over the years uh what we're all about um and trying uh try and get our name out there and uh, showcase what we can do so uh if you like what you see stay tuned uh drop a like drop a comment uh drop a subscribe or whatever they say uh and uh stay tuned we'll be back out here soon uh tonight we're going to the track uh hopefully to run a decent number um but we're gonna find out all right guys thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next one